I'd like to talk to you today about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. John 14, 6 says that Jesus is the way, is the truth, is the life. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Jesus came to this earth for one reason, to give his life for you. He knew your name. He knew how many hairs are on your head right now. He is omnipotent God, yet he wrapped himself in flesh and came to earth for one reason, to save man who had fallen because of the act of Adam. For one man's sin, death reigned. But Jesus came that life could be released through him. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. He wants you to hear what I have to say tonight. We came out here to share with you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel means good news. Good news. What is the good news? That Christ died for you. Every sin you've ever committed. And I know many say, well, I haven't sinned. Have you ever touched on a pencil? Have you ever told a white lie? One little slip up, one tiny little sin. If you won't walk a perfect life the way Jesus walked when he is on this earth, you will have to end up in hell. There's a hell to shun. Hell wasn't even made for mankind. Hell was made to lock up a rebellious angel. But Jesus came to keep you from having to go to a judgment. A judgment because God was perfect and he couldn't accept anything that wasn't perfect. But because of the blood of Jesus shed, now even though you're looking at me right now, I'm not perfect. I messed up today. I've messed up many days. Now I don't have to sin every day, but there's many days that I fall way short. And all I do is say, Jesus, you paid the price for me. Will you forgive me again today? And the Lord says, it's washed away, son. It's washed away, and I will never even remember it again. Now, the Jewish people had a covenant with God. But when they would make sacrifice, it was a type of Jesus Christ. They would kill a little innocent lamb to cover their sins. It would only cover their sins. But Jesus Christ remits sin. That means it is done away with. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, your sins will be remitted. And not only that, every day He will walk with you. And when you mess up and you come to Him and say, Lord, I've missed it again, He'll say, I will take that sin away from you because I only see the blood of the Lamb. I only see the blood of the Lamb. They made many sacrifices of lambs in the Old Testament, but Jesus came as the perfect lamb, and he died for all mankind. And now that Jesus has died almost some 2,000 years ago, everyone since then that receives Jesus Christ as his Savior will be able to walk with him. And this life is only short. This whole world's existence is a minute area of God's eternity. God will take you when you leave this life, and we never know when that'll be. The Word of God says life's like a vapor. It's like a vapor. That means it can be here one minute, and poof, it's gone. You could step out in front of a car today, make a wrong decision, and your life is over. And you will either go one of two places. 
and the Lord does not want you to go to hell, like I told you, it wasn't even made for man. It was made to lock up a rebellious angel. But if you don't choose Jesus Christ in this life, you will go there. There's only two places you can go when you leave this world. Heaven, which is a wonderful, beautiful, perfect place, or hell. Heaven has got a gate made out of one pearl. One pearl the gates of heaven cut out of. God has a wonderful place for us to spend eternity. And that is so much better than even this life. But if you don't choose Jesus in this life now, you will not get to go to heaven. Jesus came to earth, walked on this earth perfect. They lied on him. The, the religious people of that day lied on him, and they are the ones that put him on the cross. He allowed it to happen. He didn't have to let them put him on the cross. He could have called down 10,000 angels, and they would have never been able to touch him. But he was that perfect lamb that I keep telling you about without spot nor wrinkle. Perfect lamb, and he allowed himself to be put on the cross. He died for me. He died for you. He knew your name. He's known me from the beginning. And I'm telling you, I'm so happy that I received Jesus as my Savior. God will give you joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He will walk with you daily. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. And he will share your life and help you. He will help your children. He will help you in every day and every way if you will receive him as your Savior. Jesus said, I am the way. There's not two ways. A lot of people say, well, there's many ways to God. I'm here to tell you there's one way. One way to God, and his name is Jesus Christ. I've had people tell me, well, you know, there's this religion and that religion, and so there's many ways to God. There's false, they're lying to you. I'm here to tell you there's only one way to God the Father. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way. There's only one true God that wants to have a relationship with you, and it's through Jesus Christ. He will come in you and change your life. That drug addiction, he can set you free. That sickness, that sexual addiction, he can set you totally free. He can make you free. He can heal your body, and he'll do it today. He will set you free if you receive him as Jesus, receive Jesus as your Savior. If you receive Jesus, he will set you free. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Like I said, there's many ways, people say, but there's not. There's one way. The Word of God says, wide is the gate to destruction, and narrow is the way unto salvation. And that narrow way is Him, with a capital H. Him, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will save you. He will save you if you ask Him to. He will come into your heart. If you bow your knee before Jesus today, if you confess your sins and ask Jesus to come in your heart, He will save you wherever you are. Let's say tonight you lay down in your bed and you think about what I'm just telling you now. He'll come into your room and save you then. But why wait? What could happen between now and then? Only God knows. Receive Jesus Christ today. Receive Jesus as your Savior. He is a wonderful God. He, God is a good, good Father. Jesus is a great Savior. And he loves you with an everlasting love. 
The Word of God says he's married to the backslider. If you once knew Jesus and you, for some reason, walked away and you now are tormented, you no longer have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Come back to the Lord as a prodigal son. Turn around. Get up out of the trash. Come home to Jesus. Jesus is holding his arms wide open. God is holding his arms wide open for whosoever will come. There's a window of time in this earth that you are going to be able to come to Jesus Christ. The Bible says someday that, day, that door will be slammed shut. Oh, I don't want you to miss it. Oh, I don't want you to be one of those that end up in a dark, dark place away from God. Turn your life over to Jesus today. Reach out and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would receive him would not perish but would have everlasting life. It goes on to say those that don't receive him will be damned. Oh, I don't want you to be damned. I don't want you to end up in the wrong place. Come to God. Come to Jesus. The Lord, the Word says, come while he is able to be found. Come to Jesus Christ. He will save you today. That's regardless. Praise God. Holy is the Lord, righteous is the King. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. God is so good. I've seen so many miracles, signs, and wonders from the lit God, from the real God. You know, the, these, these. These things are, are, are neat for some people. They get to change. They get to play a part one day a year or something like that. But the truth of the matter is there are so many people that are just playing a part every single day. They're wearing a mask uh, to go to work. They're wearing a mask when they come home. They're wearing a mask when they see their parents. They're wearing a mask uh, when they come in and when they go out. See, that mask is... is hiding all the pain and all the trauma of the past, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, all those evil things that the, the wicked ones. There, see, there is a villain in this whole story. There is a villain in this whole story. It, it is Satan and his demons, and they will come and they will, they will, they will participate. They will, they will enjoy themselves upon, upon, upon you. Okay, because their purpose, and the purpose is always the same. Every single demon has the same purpose, and the same purpose is this. They came to kill, steal, and destroy. So they want to come and steal, and they want to come and steal your reputation. Destroy who you are in other people's eyes. And see, when, when I say destroy who you are, literally they're trying to destroy your God-given Identity. See, God didn't create trash when he created you. You weren't trash when you were born. You're not trash in the womb. You're not trash when you're out. But the Bible says that our, our sins cause us to be dirty. And I love this phrase. It's, it literally means, it, it literally is a stain on your soul. What sin does to you. And that stain on your soul opens you up to those demons and those principalities and those powers. And all that, uh, what it'll do, it'll open the door to bitterness and to shame and to guilt and to, and to fear and to anger. See, people who are afraid uh, are, are afraid sometimes because they know they deserve to be punished for what they've done. Okay? And so immediately when we sin, there is a fear that comes upon us, uh, and, it's a, and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a very spiritual thing, and it's a very, it's a very God thing, 
because God set some rules and the norms that he never wanted us to hurt each other. He didn't want us to go out after each other. He wanted us to bless each other. God made you with the intent to love and to be loved. That's what God's original intent was. He wants you to love your neighbor and love him. That's what God tells us in, in his word. That's what Jesus came to reveal to us. And so we need to not to honor what God is, 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 is giving us as his vision statement. We need to honor uh, the, the vision of God for us. See, when we pray the Our Father and we pray as it is in heaven, many of us don't even know what the, the heaven part is like. Many of us don't even have a clear idea of what we're going to see in heaven. But what we're going to see in heaven is no more tears, no more trauma, no more schisms, no more multiple personalities, no more uh, depression, no more drugs to control all that stuff, no more doctors and hospital visits, no more cemeteries. That's the vision of heaven God wants to give us. It, it even says this, God will dwell among us. He wants to dwell among uh, uh, his creation. He wants us to have full access. He wants us to be, he wants to be that next door neighbor that we can go to and not only ask for a cup of sugar, but ask for uh, his advice about our, about our, 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 our things, things that are important to us. You know, I've, I've been to the, to the jail system. I've seen the people inside the jail system. I have prayed with them. I have asked them, you know, what their concerns are. And it's so, it's so incredible to me that men in jail are talking about what their wife is doing outside, what their kids are getting into on the outside. It's amazing how these hardened criminals that are in there for, for violent offenses or for, for robbing, for stealing, for whatever it is they've done to get in there, that their prayer request is for their family members. Their prayer request is, hey, I want to I wanna have a good marriage and I want to have good godly kids that walk in integrity. See, that's the reality. They didn't want to go down that step. If they had a choice and, and really understood, I mean, if they really understood the choices and really understood where they were going, where that enemy was leading them down to, all those, uh, all those stains on their souls were taking them to, because after a while, that temptation will take you down to death. And it'll lead you down to that pit. And we don't want you to go down to the pit. We want to, we want to unmask the devil's work in, in your life. We want to unmask what, what he has tempted into and you've got, you volunteered into to get you out of those things, to show you a better way. And Jesus Christ is that answer. That communication with him is that answer to, 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 to have that, that, that uh, prayer life, to have that study time, to have that time with him and be in that presence of, his, of, of him who, 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 is, who was, who is, and is to come. That's what each one, each one of us needs. Believe me, it doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are. What I would tell the, the, the people in jail is like, you don't have to walk poor, you don't have to dress poor, you don't have to think poor when you have Jesus in you. See, you got to let those things go. The devil's already bound you in the mind, and you think you are. But Jesus has a new way, a new day for you. He's got a new plan. You know, you can be happy. The important things are in your life are in your life. Your wife, your kids are the important things in your life. Your future with them are the important things of your life. It's not how big your house is. It's not how many cool cars you have. It's not how much money you have in the bank. It's not your phone. It's the people around you. The souls around you is what's important in your life. And see, when we die, when we go to heaven, um, 
we get to experience relationship with everybody that's in heaven in that way. We're being nurtured by God. We're, we're, we're being counseled by God. We're being trained by God so that we can honor the relationships around us. Praise God. And hell really is the place for those people who just didn't want to honor that. For those people who just wanted to think of themselves, who wanted to be selfish, who can only, who, who can only see the vision of what they can get out of it. And so many people are in that position, whether they're in jail or out here. They're just looking for what they can get out of it. They're seeing if they can become famous, if they can become, uh, if they can get a million followers, if they can re you know, get a million dollars, whatever it is that makes them think that, that makes them think they can think that it's all about them and give themselves the glory. But God's ways are upside down from what man wants. God says the greatest in the kingdom of heaven has to serve and has to be the servant of all. And in that, there, there, there is that blessing. Because in that, we begin to honor each other. We begin to love each other. We begin to give of ourselves. We begin to see the fruit of that blessing come back to us. And you can walk with your head up high. You can walk with integrity. People will speak well of you. People will want to invite you into their houses, into their homes. That is what God wants from us. Every, everywhere I look, there's beautiful buildings. There's beautiful houses. There's beautiful, there's beautiful parks. But people are closed off. They're walled off. They have their alarm system, the security system, their dogs, the, 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 you know, their fences. They're walled off. They're afraid of their neighbor. I go, congratulations. That's exactly how it is in a third world country. You can't trust your neighbor in a third world country. But now we've gotten to that place now. You can't trust your neighbor here in a first world country. And that wasn't God's intent. That wasn't, that wasn't where he was going. That wasn't the vision, mission, plan of God you know he wanted us to 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 to, uh, to know that our neighbor is not gonna steal our stuff but that our neighbor is going to protect our stuff amen that's what God wanted for us praise God and as we as we as we go deeper into darkness it's going to be an increment of fear and that the increment of fear is what causes us to have insecurity in our lives and neurosis in our lives and phobias in our lives and illness in our lives and sickness in our lives and diseases in our lives. Hello? But if we seek the Lord, the Bible says that there will come a day a, a child will be born, a child will be given, right? And one of his names will be the Prince of Peace. See, God the Father is, char, uh, is, is, is the King of Peace, and God the Son is the Prince of Peace. And when Jesus came, he said, I give you peace, not as the world gives you peace, but he gives you peace that surpasses that understanding. Praise God. That's the peace that God wants to give you. He wants to cast out that fear. And, and how do you cast out that fear? He has to clean your sins. And how does he, does he clean your sins? But when you accept them and accept what he did, the payment, the blood payment that he made for your sins, he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. He cleanses you from all that sin stain that you have on your soul. That's what Jesus did for us. Not only that, though, not only that, he says, I have to leave so I can get the promise that the, the Father has for you, which is the promise of the Holy Spirit. So not only did God open the, way, open the doors of heaven for us, but he wants us to be trained here and now. He wants us to walk in that blessing here and now today. And I go, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome God. That's a real God. 
Because when I can call upon the name of the Lord and see that change and transformation in my own life, I go, that's, a, that's an amazing thing. God is a superhero. The Lord Jesus is the greatest superhero of all time. Praise God. Praise God. And everybody else is a cheap imitation of who he is. Everybody else. I mean, let's, 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 be, let's be real about that. Jesus is the real superhero. And everybody else after that has to steal from his glory. Has to steal from, from who he is. See, Jesus is the savior. So Superman can't be a savior. He, he just steals the glory from God. Right? And, and Jesus is the mighty warrior or the mighty in battle. So Batman isn't the mighty in battle. Jesus is. But Batman has to steal the glory from God. And we can go on and on and on. You know, every good concept came from the Lord. And all we can do is get a cheap a facsimile of what the real thing is. We, we can only do a shadow of, of what God has already prepared for us. I'd rather eat from the banquet table of the goodness of God, of all he's brought to us, than to live in that facsimile, to live in that lie. See, the way the, the way God does things for you is that when he cleanses that sin off of you, he removes your false identity. The Bible says uh, he makes you a new creation. Praise God. And so now you're walking around as, as that new creation without that sin state, without that with all, without all those things that are dragging you down. And that will heal your mind. He will heal your heart. He will heal your past. That's how good God is. I'm part of a, I'm, I'm part of a, a deliverance team out in, in Dallas. And we have to do deliverances three, three times a week, two or three times a day. Two rooms going full blast. Because the enemy is destroying people. He's lying to people. And we don't want that for people. I tell people it's a lot easier to avoid the devil than to get him cast out of you. It's a lot easier to, to accept Jesus when you're young and try to get that devil out of you when you're old. When he has already stolen things, when he has already destroyed things, when he's already kill things in your life that you highly value. I don't want to I, want, I don't want you to live with that regret of choosing God too late. I don't want you to live there. I want you to live in the goodness of God now. And the goodness of God will, will work in your life. That's who God is. Too many people are being tormented and tortured in their minds. Too many people are running after lust. Too many people uh, are, are, are slaves to their sin. The Bible says you're either a slave to the devil or you're a slave to God. I'd much rather be a slave to God. Praise God. Because he's a good father and he gives good things. And, and all the things that I value, he values. And all the things that he loves, I want to make sure I love. That's the good God I follow. And in all those things, I have seen blessing and multiplication in my life. Praise God. I have seen healing from disease. I have seen healing from all the things that have tormented me. In Jesus' name. And if you, if you need prayer or want prayer, we'd be happy to pray for you. Um, today before we leave. In Jesus' name. Just, just.
God bless everyone. This afternoon, you've heard my brothers. You've heard my brothers preach the gospel message to you. Preach the good news. Preach that message that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Messiah. And he calls out to you in love to receive his message and embrace him and to have your life changed. And that is my hope for you. That is the opportunity tonight. The Bible is filled with stories where people with many difficulties in a moment in time, they realize the importance of the situation and they act. I'll share with you one in the Gospel of Luke in the fifth chapter. And it reads, as Jesus is walking through the town, it says, And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. You see, a publican was a tax collector, and this man named Levi elsewhere is known as Matthew, one of the Gospels with his name. And when Jesus saw him there at his work, that's all Jesus needed to say to him was, follow me. Matthew knew in a moment in time that he would be forever changed. That's why at that moment, the very next verse, it says, he left all. He left it all behind. He left behind his wealth. He left behind the prestige of his position because he knew there was something greater calling to him. And that's why he was willing at that moment to leave it all behind, to rose up and follow Jesus. Time and time again we see that same pattern. There's a popular story about blind Bartimaeus where he is blind. And he knows he needs help. He knows there's this miracle man named Jesus. And he knows deep inside that he can heal him. And he cries out to him. Even when people tell him to shut up and be quiet, he cares not. He cries out like a newborn baby that needs milk. He's not concerned what other people think. He's only concerned with being reunited with God. And because he cried out, Jesus answered his request and he became blind no more. And just like Matthew, he followed Jesus. And that's what I'm calling you. You may have lived your life in blindness. You may have never thought about God. I'm calling you to not only think on God, I'm calling you to act on it. Because though I am not Jesus, I try to be Jesus-like. That's what it means to be Christians, little lights, little lights of Christ. And I'm calling out to you to follow me, not as in myself, but to follow me as I try to act as Christ. That you will be moved. That you will be moved just, just as Matthew was. That you're willing to know that this is the message for you. That it will resonate somehow, even amidst all the distractions, that this message is for you and this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to be forever changed. To rise up and leave the rest behind. And decide that today, tonight, I will follow Jesus. Because I know it will fulfill me. I know it asks for something more and greater that this world has in my entire life has led up to this point and I will not shrink from it. I will not take the cowardly path of the world anymore. I will decide to give my life to Him, and there will be no looking back. If you are on the fence, if you heard some of the words said by myself, my brother Steve, or brother Louise, and you are moved by it, if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart, Embrace that feeling. Do not shrink from it. Rise up and follow Christ. Rise up and be heard. Rise up and be changed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your God if you believe. Embrace Him. Take Him into your heart. Allow Him to change you.